All right. Hey guys, how's it going? Good. It goes. <laughs> really good. It's still moving. First question, who are you and what do you do? Uh, I'm Dylan and I am a human and I do human things. Uh, I play guitar and sing in the band. All right. I'm uh, I'm Koi. I play the drums. Hit things. <laughs> I'm Bailey and uh, I'm the bass player and uh, I also play a couple other instruments. Right on. What other other instruments are those? Um, I guess in the band I've played uh, trumpet uh, and mandolin in the past. Cool. And you just started. Was, did I see your first show was in January? Um, that was Koi, I think. In oh no- yeah, Koi. In November. Well, or we had an instrument switch up. Bailey, weren't you playing? The oh yeah, trumpet? that's right. So actually, I was playing trumpet at the end of the last year, like in October and stuff, and then I started playing bass. Uh, I started learning everything in December, and then January was the first show. Oh, got it, got it, got it. So you, uh, you're spot on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but Dylan, you're the only founding member of the group still, is that right? That is correct. Cool, I'm going to put you on the spot. Here we go. Um, is there anything that makes Koi and Bailey different from the musicians they replaced? Um, I mean, yeah, Koi is our first like drummer who's been like an adult. Got it. And like, yeah. Like we've had, we've gone through like six, five or six drummers. So it's, it's nice to have someone lucky lucky number seven, lucky number seven. (laughs) And then, yeah, Bailey just like brings like a good uh, attitude to practice and it's been, yeah. Yeah. It sounds like she brings some uh, musicianship as well. Right. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask about labels. Um, I read an interview about your first EP uh, distributed by youth riot records. Uh, where you said, we've been sitting on it for a while. We sent it out to labels to see who would be interested, and it took forever to find someone. Um, I've never worked with a label. Uh, There's some obvious kind of positives to working with a major label, but what were the advantages and disadvantages of working with like a small local label? Because for Um, your most recent thing, you decided to self-publish. Right. Right. I think a lot of our stuff we've like self-done. And uh, with Youth Riot, they helped us with uh, tapes, like uh, getting tapes made. With, with like kind of f- finding money for that or just they like, had distributors? They, well, so they're like, they're local and like they, they put their stuff on their label like in like Sonic Boom and like the local record stores. Um, so they helped out with that. But they, I mean, they were definitely like a small, van, like small label and they were, they, uh, they, you could tell they were busy. So that was like, I guess the drawback was like, they, they had a lot on their plate. It seemed like at the time when they were, working with us sure so then was it a big decision to decide you were gonna i guess self-publish the the newest when you put that through mountaintree.tv is that is, yeah, is mean, that right to call that a label that's us yeah like, that's that's yeah that's like a, a side project if you will where i was doing similar stuff like this like interviewing people right right yeah and i saw then, you, you co-organized the seattle freeze festival right right and yeah then, so what were the big kind of or is, is there a big goal for that side project uh i mean it was just like uh, I felt like no one was really doing like this kind of thing. Like no one was like doing like interview, like with local level. Like, I feel like it was only like KXP and like the bigger stuff that was really, and that's not even, you know, then there's like, there's more local stuff going on than like just the bands who are able to make it onto KXP. Sure. There's, there's still a bar threshold. That's like, yeah, yeah, their, their threshold's pretty high. It's an achievement level to get spotlighted. I just felt like the, the, the people who aren't quite there yet weren't getting the attention that they deserve. Yeah. Are, are you still doing that? This is, I'm, I just started this a few weeks ago. So if you've been doing this for a while. Were there things you learned it, early on? Um, we're sharing. So when you're interviewing people, you definitely have to, uh, like steer them Yeah. because they, they'll just ramble. And so like, Oh, I, everyone loves to talk about themselves. Right, I'm guilty right. of it myself. And so like the, the way I had to do, I was like, I would hold the mic cause I had like a portable, we would do it like at shows and stuff. And I had like a portable, recorder with the microphone and I would like just physically take the microphone away from them. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, away. here we go. Yeah. Um, but it's been, uh, I don't think I've done much with it since, uh, freeze fest. Got it. Because of obvious reasons. Yeah. That, that was a big reason I wanted to start this. I just missed the kind of idea of a right. local music scene. I don't get to see all the cool people I meet at shows. And this was one way to try to, yeah, get back. And get that back. Community. Yeah. I know. I know a lot of people have it worse right now in a lot of situations but you know we're just here we kind of miss doing this i mean all of us 
and you know we're tr we've been trying to find anything to do to bring that feeling back you know like playing live shows just being with the musical community around here yeah before we started filming today you guys said you just recorded some new songs today uh uh not today but oh gotcha uh, yeah, yeah. Like a month ago about a month ago yeah yeah, yeah we had a we had, rehearsal we had earlier today earlier, yeah. yeah right do you uh are, are you thinking big plans moving forward like do you want to release new new stuff during this or kind of wait till we get on the other side of it there's all this talk about what the right move i mean i think wise is. i think we're gonna just probably put it out within yeah. the next month or so we were just we talking like, about this the same yeah. thing we're like is this the right time but yeah. is any time going to be the right time right. anymore <laughs> i think yeah i think we're probably just going to do it yeah that's kind of where our mind is with my project well um Coy and Bailey, I'm curious, do you guys split any of the management duties with Dylan? Things like whether it's booking or social media, press, merchandise, or is everything kind of funneled through the front man? Uh, no, I think we definitely do a pretty good job of like splitting up the duties to yeah. just cover as much ground as possible. Um, you know, I try to use, utilize my time. If I need, have any downtime, downtime while I'm working, I'll try to get as much done as I can. Just, you know. And promoting yeah, through playlists. You're the one who set this up too. Yeah, yeah, right. I, yeah. yeah. I, I saw you posted it, and I was like, "Oh, that sounds like a great opportunity." No, you reached out right away. And yeah, it, yeah. Is that different than how you guys started, where it kind of started with Dylan? You've been more comfortable passing along certain duties because you trust your bandmates. Uh, I mean, definitely in the beginning, like with the last lineup, like I would do most of the stuff because, like, they didn't have computers. You know what I mean? They were doing like everything through their phone, and so I, I like. There's certain things you can't do just through your phone, like with this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and like I'd been doing it for so long that I just like kept doing it. But like Koi's definitely like stepped up and like done more than other people, what I expected him to do and like what <laughs> other people have done in the past. So it's been cool, yeah, to not have yeah. to worry about <laughs> all of it all the time, yeah. Yeah, what, one of the things you do is uh, – Kind of, you you edit the a lot of the music videos you've right. done, and I want to talk about the idea behind music presentation. Are things like music videos or album covers mm. uh, important with your artistic statements? Because you there were some I was watching the videos for um, just a little bit longer and a breakup song. You had this cool archival footage. I, I was curious yeah. where that was from. So and also is, the uh, video for Welcome Home is just batshit crazy. <laughs> yeah, so like the archive stuff I found, there was like a f copyright free website or whatever with all these video clips. And I think I downloaded all of them. Yeah. Just to have like, you know, just some sort of footage for whatever. And then, uh, but a lot of it was like the same, it was from like the same stuff. Like there was a lot of like aerial footage, like it was like military, like aerial footage. And, uh, and then there was like a space program like footage and like it worked really well for the a little bit longer video. And then like we yeah, we edited like our own stuff on top of it, like the spinning astronaut. Um, but yeah, I think it's like really important. F f like I, I don't think I don't know if bands always think about like the visual aspect of their bands. Like they're so focused on the audio part of it that they don't think the visual stuff's important or they just I don't know. They. To me, that's like a complete package. Like you gotta have a good cover. You gotta have a good like video. It's all gotta like be cohesive. I, I agree totally. Late, lately, we've started to take a lot of pride in the in the videos we put out because it, it it's an a way to engage with the music mm -hmm. and hopefully it. I, I don't think it needs to tell the exact same story, but just is it if it sets a mood the right. same way. Yeah, it depends what you're going for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I saw one of your your live videos a recent one in um recorded a couple live songs and in some room with a bunch of big windows and oh it looked yeah really was... look it, the way it was filmed was really cool i liked the you know visually just the live aspect of it not oh, in the studio you. but you know like in a room it looked really cool though yeah that was actually our practice space it's our singer's house and we nice. we just love practicing there we have a great view and brought um the guy who's actually doing a current music video with us we've worked with him a few times and just he gets great shots so yeah. <laughs> Yes, but spent a day tracking a few songs. Yeah, that was cool. Thank you. Um, I get yeah, kind of talk, talking about my band a little bit and squeeze myself in there. But, <laughs> but when you emailed me, you said you had a few funny stories about yeah, high crime, yeah. the project okay, I so play in. Have we of, oh, yeah. have we met before? Or kind like, of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the funny story kind of goes along with the show and tell thing. So uh -huh. I actually brought your set list. Oh, from Barboza. I thought it was pretty funny. So I collect set lists. I do so, too, actually. Yeah, it, I love it. It just like you get 
something from the artist from that exact show, you know, the list where they played in their handwriting, just something about it I love. But it was my first show in Seattle when I moved here. Oh. And um, so, you know, I came and bought a CD from you guys, got the set list. And uh, I, when I was watching you, I loved it. And I was like, man, I want to do that. So then I started well, Were you already and, playing in Weep Wave? No, I wasn't. And that's kind of what, like, inspired me to find these guys and oh, join so this a band. Oh, so thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, was this, like, last summer? I'm it, trying to remember last when August. You... It was, like, last August, yeah. Because I moved here last July. Did you what, like, September, October? October, yeah. Yeah, that was our first time we ever played Barboza, and it was yeah. kind of similar to you. Barboza was the first <laughs> venue I ever saw. Just I, I moved to Seattle in 2014, mm-hmm. and my first week here, I went and saw a show. They're one of my favorite bands, is Fleet Foxes, and oh, nice. they were on a yeah. hiatus. Uh, but their guitar player was opening up, just doing this like experimental show. So I went to see that at Barboza, and it was crazy because they were, and I had seen him play with Fleet Foxes on doing big theater shows, yeah. and they had done TV, the biggest festivals, but they were like only 10 people in the room when he was playing this small <laughs> thing. Crazy, yeah. Uh, and it kind of taught me a lot as a musician that like, that he is having so much fun on stage playing to this small group of people. And he yeah. was thankful for everyone for coming out that like, there will be different highs and lows of being a musician, but like cherishing every time you get to play your music in front of people. Yeah. And I was definitely feeling, I, we had, a, I thought we had a fun show at Barboza. That's yeah. so cool. You were, was there a reason you came to that show? No, we were just looking for live music that yeah. night and stumbled upon it, and uh, it was a great decision because it's kind of led me, led me here for sure. Because <laughs> I, I really don't know, I probably would definitely not be here if it weren't for you know going there that night, which I think is pretty. It was pretty interesting. Oh, that's least. really cool to hear. Yeah, full circle. Full circle. Here we are. <laughs> I kind of remember me- meeting you that night because I think you only had large T-shirts. Oh, that's right. <laughs> we 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 have we have better T-shirts now. Um, <laughs> But I remember being slight. I, I was happy to give you a set list because I collect them too. But I remember being slightly embarrassed because we, if I remember right, I think we have way too many notes on that set list. There's like, a couple. There's a couple. Like so and so talks here. Don't, plug yeah, merge yeah. after this yeah. song. Brielle intro. Mitch talks. Thanks venue. Plug merge. <laughs> <laughs> so and that was the first time we had like spelled it just because yeah. we wanted the Barboza show to go so well. It meant yeah, so much yeah, for you us. Yeah, it out. It's smart. Yeah, but I'm like, oh, that's not. We're not going to look cool now that he has the set list. <laughs> no, it's cool. You know, my favorite set list I've gotten, I saw The Wigs, this, like, southern rock band, and uh, he wrote it in just sloppy Sharpie on the back of, like, a Bud Light bo- uh-huh. like, cardboard box. <laughs> that That's a nice set list. I we like we should do a part ones. two of this where we can, like, <laughs> share, like, well, I'll, I'll show you some of my set list yeah. when we wrap up here, and I'd, it'd be cool if you, like, film took pictures or whatever of some of yours and we yeah could, that'd be cool yeah. yeah yeah i love showing them fun little feature i love the stories of it <laughs> cool uh so did all of you bring something for show and tell or was that the big show and tell piece this this was the the kind of uh the interesting one and then we brought we brought something else too of we just Wave. brought like merch to show <laughs> we have something new you know kind of pandemic kind of related to oh yeah i'd love to see it uh this well how about we yeah now is the time for show and tell <laughs> all right well with our, because like, yeah, we're going to be releasing this new single soon. And like, usually we'll do like a tape or whatever. But, you know, we're not going to be doing it this time. But we got bandanas made. The double S face mask. Oh, yeah. fantastic. And so you can wear it on your face. You can put it on your dog. Put it on your head. You can do whatever with it. Now, now because we've made merch, like, mm. how, how much of a conversation was it? Like, all right, do we go with yellow? What Or are there different color bandanas? Or how do you decide on this exact design? Like, I mean, out. yeah. Usually hey, everything like... gets overcomplicated when you're like, all right, we're spending a lot of money <laughs> doing this. Um, cause I do all the design stuff. Oh, gotcha. Um, so like we don't have to pay anybody and like usually like when I'm coming up with something, I'll have something in mind, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I actually bought a yellow bandana from a band called, uh, Sunbathe from Portland. Oh yeah. And, um, they have a yellow bandana with the, the black text. I'm like, I want, I want to do like my version of that. Mm-hmm. And so this is like what we got. Um, and yeah, and are, are these available to purchase now or they will be very soon? soon. Cool. I, I, I don't think it's in camera. Do you mind holding that up yeah. for people to see uh, it? I guess I don't need to hold the mic, but yeah, that looks so cool. And then, yeah, and so you can fold it, and then like each fold is like a different, I don't know how to do it. Yeah, so if you it, fold it kind of in the it, triangle, you, you get you like a different, different section. Yeah, yeah, remind me, do these circle symbols, do they come from album artwork or do they symbolize anything important um, for you guys? Well, well, I guess one does, right? 
So like uh, the song we're putting out is called Bury the Bones, and it's about mm. dogs. So we have a, a dog skull right here. <laughs> That's so cool. And then we have the the eye, and if you fold this right, you can actually get it to be like a third eye <laughs> as like a headband. Of course. And then uh, we actually have a cult, and this is kind of like the symbol of our cult right here, the hand and the mushroom. I'm just holding. <laughs> and then, you know, just a moon because space. Yeah. yeah. Before the pandemic, you might have seen some... Uh, some of our cult posters yeah. <laughs> in random places. <laughs> just like a real market, I throw up a poster. Yeah, right. Yeah, join yeah. our cult. It's really just an email Going list. Going through Seattle, sticking stickers <laughs> on places. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, and Bailey, then yeah, we have, have other items. Or Bailey, you have other show and tell items. Um, we got. I our, don't. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> It's, I wish I would have yeah, brought one. The, the others have you covered here. Right, I want to see what else we got going on. Yeah, right. yeah. I'll, I'll hold this. I have two mics. Uh, why is it not saying? Here we go. I actually, this is a surprise to me. I don't know if I. Oh, okay. It's cool. Just yeah. Weird, yeah. And so this is like the la like our first twelve inch record. You have the holographic sticker on. Oh the yeah. Front. And then. Uh, I'm just gonna. Yeah. yeah okay. Here we go. And then so we got it done on. Uh, like clear oh, like hold, blue hold that up a bit again. clear blue vinyl and then uh each v record comes with a you were talking about the artwork earlier uh we did like a a full lyric booklet with uh, like pictures like photography yes, i've I'm done i'm so glad you guys are doing that we, yeah. yeah and then like yeah so we did it like with photography i've done over the years living here in seattle like all these are taken in seattle but yeah, so it's all included. Yeah, with like CDs gone now, you don't see that often anymore. I right. still like, like to buy some yeah. CDs, and, yeah. it, and when I do, the last few ones I've bought, I've been a little disappointed because there's maybe just the cover, there isn't a booklet inside of it. Yeah, right. yeah, so, I like, yeah. I like always wanted to do one of these growing up, and so like we finally got the opportunity to do it, and I'm very happy with the way it all came out. Yeah, how many uh, copies of the vinyl did you press? Um, we got like 300 made, mm -hmm. and uh, I think we're about halfway through. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, because we did a big tour last year, and that definitely helped uh, sell. Yeah, that's that. probably like a sold probably that, like a third of them. Really? Uh, just on tour. Yeah. How, how does the merch break down after shows? Is it like is it vinyl first, then T-shirts? Or I'm curious how yours. It really depends, always. like what city you're in and yeah. like where you're playing. Like if you're playing for kids, like usually they want. Do you play for like like college kids? You mean? Or like we've played all some all yeah. ages, yeah. all ages. We played this really weird place in uh, Sacramento. But um, yeah, it just it just depends on the crowd. Like Dude, old do you remember dudes. The, like the Sacramento venue. I'm just uh, curious. If it's like uh, silver orange. The silver okay. orange. Okay. Yeah, not what we played. But yeah, <laughs> we, we had some weird. I, Sacramento is just kind of weird in general. <laughs> I, I I preferred it to San Francisco mostly because we got our you car broken there. into. It. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Like it's it's a rite of passage for touring bands, but that's where yeah. it happened to us. Have you had to deal with that yet? So we played uh, when we played San Francisco. We we did a double header. Mm -hmm. We played San Francisco in the afternoon. And parking was like that's the craziest parking I've ever had to deal with, and we we parked like th that's the farthest I've ever had to park from a venue, <laughs> in like the sketchiest area, and then uh, we played this rooftop show, and it was like it was last year when that big storm was happening. Do you remember oh, that the big storm? St I was here. For, yeah, it we was played the snowstorm like in oh, January. Oh, okay. uh, Snowmageddon. Snowmageddon. There have been a few yeah. Snowmageddon or snow <laughs> Snowmageddon slash snowpocalypse. There's right. always some yeah. media debate on what to actually call it. But it was the one in 2019, and it like we left right before it hit, and it the storm basically chased us the whole way down the coast, and so we played San Francisco, and like halfway through, we sit on a rooftop in on like a rooftop January. In January, so like halfway, th like we're right before we're supposed to start. It just starts dumping rain like on like they have like this shitty like easy pop-up like yeah. tent thing to keep the rain off but it was so sketchy and then we had to load the car and then we drove to uh santa cruz to play that night and it was just like oh, dumping yeah. rain the whole time like we got i got I, remember, I got out of the van and like the where the curb is on the street the it gutters was were just like yeah of water like it was the streets were like flooding california can't handle that rain <laughs> um but that's our san francisco story that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, well, I want to give the last word to you guys. Uh, thank you for bringing the, the merch and the other things. Uh, are there any big plugs you want to give as we wrap up here? Uh, we're putting out a single and what, what, like a, probably in the next month. Yeah. And then a new music video shortly after that. 
And uh, have you shot the new music video yet? It's is all. There any, any it's kind of tease You want to get for it? Is it similar. There's some dogs in it. There's yeah, dogs. You like dogs? It's, it's the song and video for you. If if I see a dog get buried, I'm gonna unsubscribe. No, <laughs> no all happy, beautiful dogs. Cool. Well, Weep Wave, thank you guys so much yeah. for coming on today. Thanks yeah, for having thanks us. For having thanks us. so much. Cool. Until next time. <laughs>